Well, how are you, Stan? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I watched your movie last night. Oh, fantastic. I think you may be the first. Oh, maybe. <laughs> well, I assume you've seen it. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, I thought it was very entertaining and a little sad, as, mm -hmm. but especially since it's based on a true story, you know. Yep. <laughs> Those, those yeah, by the way, very based on a true story. We changed yeah. nothing. I was going to say, it seemed like you didn't change anything. because I, we, I we actually, the where we could, we matched to actual footage. So hmm. uh, when she walks him out uh, to to the escape, that's, hmm. a, that's a perfect match to the video footage from Lauderdale. And when they come upon him and take him to the ground at the end, that's a direct match to police footage. Huh. Well, yeah, I always, when these things happen, I'm always, when I'm watching the movie, I'm like, oh, what happened? So I go ahead and yeah. read about it in Wikipedia. And yeah, it's exactly what happened. <laughs> so. And they, they, they look so much like them that it was really easy for us to kind of fall into. We were, you know, mimicking what actually happened. Right. I mean, she, Wendy was watching it unfold when it happened and said, my goodness, I look a lot like that woman. <laughs> and, uh, and so she and her manager, Gladys, uh, went and sold it and then developed a script. And then once it was greenlit, they went out looking for a director. And I I vigorously lobbied for the job because, um, you know, it's rare that you get to do a Lifetime movie like this. Mm -hmm. This is not a typical Lifetime movie by any stretch of the imagination because the good guys are the bad guys and the bad guys are the good guys. That's um, true. You're, you're really you're really for them. You really want them to succeed yeah, and get to correct. where they're going, even though they're correct. terrible <laughs> or he's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, I was very blessed in my career to to work with Walter Hill, who was one of my true heroes. Uh, we we won Emmys together on Broken Trail, the sure. the miniseries, and Walter wrote The Getaway, and I kind of used that and Thelma and Louise as my kind of tent post you know and my my touchstones for for this movie yeah i was thinking of them and louise after i watched it i thought you know there's only a few ways this movie could end you know one of them yeah. one or both of them getting killed or or uh captured or escaping yeah. there's there's, there's right. no other way you know correct <laughs> correct so um uh you answered my first question already <laughs> so did you know uh any of the cast before this no, tangentially. Uh, mm -hmm. I was a big fan of Wendy's from Bridesmaids and Reno 911 and the Goldbergs. Um, so I knew I knew all her work. Uh, but I have uh, I, I now have hit bingo on my Sutherland uh, bingo card because I worked with Kiefer early in my career. Mm -hmm. I, I did a movie that I is maybe my most personal and favorite uh, called Behind the Mask with Donald. So uh, when I and we really wanted Ross if, and he initially turned us down oh. and I wrote him a letter and I said, um, and, and I mentioned how much I loved working with his dad and, and how much I cherished that experience. And he went to his dad and I think that certainly didn't hurt us, um, that his dad put in a good word for me. So, so then we got Ross. If, so I've now worked with, uh, with actually three of the, the Sutherlands and actually his brother rogue, is an agent. I've worked with him as well. So now I think I've worked with every Sutherland on the planet. Yeah, I think you're like an extended <laughs> member of the family at this point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I know. I love Rossum. I'd never heard him before. And then I watched Three Pines and he was so great in that. He's really, uh, he is a real gem. Uh, you know, we were yeah. so really, really lucky. I mean, this was a, this was a two-hander. And, you know, if, if he's not as good as her, the movie doesn't work at all. Right, right. Um, it's the only fight I ever had with my executive producer, Howard. Really? I say, I, yeah, we have to, we have to find the money. I don't care if I have no wardrobe, no sets, no extras, but if, if, if the role of Casey White is wrong, I, we got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. No, they have that, that connection and he has that, yeah. they both have that charisma and it, yeah. it really they works. hit it. They literally hit it. Well, we had one day of rehearsal and they literally hit it off immediately. That yeah. all that's that, that chemistry you saw was very real. Sure, good. Yeah, because you don't always get that. In no, you do not. <laughs> I've certainly, I, I've certainly, I, you know, I've made about eighty or ninety movies and series, and we, I've certainly been in the other situation. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was a series uh, last year that I really, really wanted to do well, and <laughs> but the two leads just 
did not have chemistry. They're both great actors, you know. Yeah. Was good. But, just did not work and it got canceled. Yeah. Like, ah, that's probably why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, how long did it take to make the movie and where was it shot? We shot in Winnipeg because um, we wanted, we had to find some place in uh, Canada that would uh, double for both Kentucky, Indiana, they, uh, Alabama. So those were the states they ran through. So um, flat was important. And that's one of the things you get in, you know, we, we get farmland and, and uh, I mean, you saw those two houses next to each other and nothing else. That's hard to find. Yeah. Um, you're, not gonna find, you're certainly not going to find that in Toronto or Vancouver. Yeah. It's hard. But, so we were blessed that way. Um, and then we obviously needed someplace that we could take over and transform into a detention center and then also into a prison. And so uh, I had shot, I think, eight or nine movies in here in Winnipeg, which is where I am now. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I was excited to come back. Okay. And it took us, uh, we shot in 15 days. Uh, we snuck in right in before the SAG strike of June 30th. And then, of course, they delayed for two weeks. We went, damn, we could have had another two weeks. <laughs> Well, so did it go pretty much as planned or were there any problems? Well, there's, you know, on a schedule like that, um, it was an ultra, ultra ambitious script. It had, I think, about 125 scenes. All, everything's like a short scene, which is a, a director's nightmare on a schedule like this. Um, so we just made uh, the AD and I made a hard and fast rule that we would never move the trucks on a day so that I would ever I would never lose an hour, two hours of movement. So frequently we would um shoot four different uh sets on the same day so the car wash the 7-eleven the used car where they bought the ford f-150 and tommy's the ex-husband's uh apartment were all across the street from each other oh wow huh, funny <laughs> um and uh so do you have any funny stories you can tell us about maybe i know it was a short shoot but <laughs> uh well here's the thing that, you know, her background is comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, she an extensive comedy uh, pedigree going back to the Groundlings. And uh, and he's really funny. And I knew, I, I kind of had a sense he'd be really funny because his dad's really funny. Um, which is probably not what people remember about Donald Sutherland, but, you know, go, go back Mash. to MASH. MASH, go yeah. Go back to MASH and you'll see it. Um, so, and, you know, and Kelly's Heroes, too. So, uh, so I... I was not surprised to find out that they're both really funny and really, really uh, facile. So there's a lot of improv in this movie uh, that al always caught us off guard. So in a couple of takes, we would just bust up laughing and we'd have to shoot again. Um, and my favorite moments were when he would make her laugh or she would make him laugh. And you can see actually see in the film, there's a moment when uh, he's she's putting him in the cruiser and uh and she's she's he says uh uh oh i'm glad to see my kissing cousin is uh taking me to the courthouse and she says completely unscripted uh why don't you save that kissing for the judge's ass and oh. he busts out <laughs> laughing and by the way he that laugh in the movie that's in the movie that's real that is not a uh -huh. force he busted out laughing and almost went out of character she pushed him in the car and then she walks away and goes i'm glad you found that funny dumbass that's also <laughs> not in the script <laughs> and then we and then uh, we're like uh, behind the camera going don't don't ruin the tape <laughs> that's great um and you started out as a producer mostly how how did you get into the directing well what happened was as the i was a tv movie supplier for 25 years and uh and and loved it but you know when i got into the tv movie business there was tv movies everywhere cbs nbc abc fox showtime hbo um, not to mention, obviously, Hallmark Lifetime. And then it just started contracting and contracting and contracting. By the time it became uh, Lifetime and Hallmark, um, I, I was looking to direct. But by having my own company, I couldn't do both. The directing is the one thing that you have to be completely exclusive to. So I could do two or three TV movies in the same year at the same time. But I can't do, you know, I couldn't direct and produce. So if I had a movie shooting in Toronto and a movie shooting in Winnipeg, no one was ever going to let me direct. Ah. So I had to make a decision. My my older kids were in college. I was missing them and wanting to be able to have more free time. So I sold uh, my company. Actually, Howard bought most of it. Um, Howard Bronstein, who's my friend. And 
uh, kind of stepped off the carousel about eight years ago and started at the bottom again as a writer and director. And uh, it's gone very well, knock wood. <laughs> and um, is there a big difference between directing a TV show and a small movie or a TV movie and a movie for the theaters? You know, when I started in this business, you know, TV movies were like the ugly stepsister of mm -hmm. features. It's like, oh, you're doing a TV movie. <laughs> um, but, you know, with with the advent of streaming and with the the way that the media landscape has changed, there really is no difference between TV and movies anymore. I mean, they're having a hard time figuring out what gets an Oscar and what gets an Emmy mm -hmm. um, because of, you know, what yeah. where some where. So, no, not at all. I don't think I think it's now just about I mean, I was always. I was a, a film nerd growing up. And so I just only ever wanted to make movies. I didn't really care about what size the screen was. Sure. Um, I remember I I uh, I produced a, a movie Arnold Schwarzenegger directed and we became very close. Oh, I, and I know which one you're talking about. I don't remember the name, but I saw it on your- Christmas, <laughs> Christmas in Connecticut. Yeah, and, uh, that looked interesting. Virginia. And uh, which came about as, a, you know, it's completely out of left field. I got a phone call and said, hey, would you like to have Arnold Schwarzenegger? It was literally just wrapped <laughs> Do at the time and so we became very close during the making of that film and one night we were having dinner believe it or not at his house maria shriver making us dinner <laughs> and i was having a major out-of-body experience and <laughs> and he said i don't understand why don't you do big features and i said because i didn't get i really didn't get into the business to i go to make money or be famous and i said at, as a television movie producer i'm like the old contract producer on mm -hmm. a lot like you know Raul Walsh on at at at, uh, at Warner Brothers where you know Jack Warner would walk in drop the Casablanca script on his desk and say you're going into production in three weeks right mm -hmm. and I said I've shot all over the world I've shot in pretty much every genre I said if I was in the feature business I'd be lucky to make a movie every two or three years and yeah. I worked my last executive job was running the Goober Peters company for John Peters and Peter Goober and they were running a feature company and I was running a television company and they would make a movie every two years. And I was making three a year. And I thought, mm, that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that is that a, just to get off the point for a minute, the Christmas in Connecticut, is that a remake of the old one with Barbara Stanwyck or yeah. completely different? Yes, correct. So what oh, happened was cool. my, my friend was running TNT and they just started working there. And uh, we were really good friends. And he said, look, we want to try and do some remakes. So he sent me the MGM, the beautiful MGM... Uh, coffee table book and he said go through that and pick a movie wow. and wow. so I picked a movie and uh called <clears throat> father of the bride and I said he goes great the only thing is there's a producer that has to pay us two hundred fifty thousand dollars by the end of the year which is like in three months which is never going to happen so the movie <laughs> that, so it's going to revert back to us and you can make it as a tv movie just hold hold your horses for three months so I did and then he literally called me that day and he goes I have bad news Pick another movie. <laughs> but that's like a dream to be able to pick from all those movies. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wish I could and do that. Like... that. That movie was, you know, in, in uh, of all of my resume, that one was truly one. I had Arnold Schwarzenegger, so literally we couldn't go anywhere without media paying close attention to us, which for a <laughs> TV movie is unheard of. We had yeah. we had a premiere at the DGA that was attended to by over a hundred media. Um, you know, we're lucky if, if I get to talk to you on a television movie. So <laughs> Um, so that was, and then I got to work with Tony Curtis, who was, you know, one of my film idols and he did a, he was, he was adorable and he put his director's chair on the set when he wasn't working and he put a second empty director's chair next to it. And he, you could just go and sit down and like mention a title. Hey, tell us about Spartacus or the great race or the defiant ones. And wow. he would just rattle off stories. So it was, you know, what awesome. was it like working with Carol Monroe? So wow. uh, that for me as a film nerd, that was just heaven. That's great. Too bad you couldn't record that. <laughs> that right. Wonderful exactly. to listen to. Um, gosh. Um, so um, do you have any, did you have any control over the casting of this movie? I mean, you talked yeah, other about than a little when, bit. When he came with it, um, and then I had control over all the rest of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and, um, and many, many, many of the cast are people I had worked with before. So- mm -hmm. I find on these short schedules that you, you don't have the luxury of an actor who's really good in an audition, but shows up on set and doesn't have the goods that they, they worked really hard on their audition. But when they actually have to, to be on set and, and pivot and change something in their character, they don't 
they don't have those tools and you really don't find them out until you're under the gun. So for me, I kind of would prefer to cast people I've worked with before. So I have that uh, mm -hmm. in my back pocket. So that makes sense. The sheriff, so the sheriff was somebody I'd done four movies before. The mom was somebody I'd done five movies before. The used car salesman was somebody. I mean, they, there's literally the, the, the cop that arrests the wrong person when they pull him over. Uh, that was his 17th movie for me. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. I like the little dog, by the way. <laughs> I was glad the mom oh, the, yeah. took the dog. By the way, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, she had, she had, a, she had a, a dog named Spike that was pretty similar to that one. Wow. Okay. We well, wanted to get as much real, as, as close to the truth as we could. What's amazing to me is this all happened in what, 2021 in real life? Yes. And you get to yeah. make a movie so fast about it. Yeah. That's cool. Well, that's a, that's a credit to, to Wendy's hard work. And also the two guys that wrote this, uh, I had a history with, cause we worked together. Um, I was the supervising producer of the Lizzie Borden series in mm -hmm. Halifax. Yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and Blaney and Small, the two guys that wrote this, were on the staff for me. So I knew them and I knew how good they were. And uh, they pretty much had their first draft greenlit. I mean, they're really good. And that's a th this movie is a, a tribute to them because, you know, we didn't have them to do rewrites. Because they were already on strike when this was greenlit. WGA. Cool. Um, uh, why do you think that lifetime audiences will enjoy this movie? Oh, I think this is... This is will hit the sweet spot for um, for lifetime audiences. It's a love story in the true crime genre. I mean, how can you can, really can't do any better? Uh, you know, hit the bullseye for for what lifetime loves. And I think it's it's different enough. You know, with not to cast aspersions at Hallmark, but most of their movies are the same. You know, it's yeah. not, it's very formulaic. This is sure. this is any but a formulaic movie um it's shot like an indie feature it's definitely cut like an indie feature mm -hmm. um i borrowed some some tricks from steven soderbergh in the cutting of a couple of scenes like you know the one where she cries in her, alone in her apartment and also the one where he reveals to her i'm not a good guy those are cut in a very kind of indie feature way with you know dialogue over over characters that aren't talking in an embrace um mm -hmm. so uh I, I I feel blessed that uh, that Lifetime took a chance to to make something that's a little bit you know kind of off the reservation for them. Um, I think it's you know, good. I good. Think you're right. It fits right yeah. into there. They do a lot of thrillers and what I like to call women in trouble movies, <laughs> and also romance. So it's good. It's good. Yeah. Uh, my, my, look, the last two I did for them was the the Long Island serial killer, which uh, has now been had now been retitled the Gilgo Beach Killer, and um, and the uh, cruel instruction, which uh, which was about the very dark story of the the scourge of teen psychiatric hospitals in red states, and and, uh, and it was a dark, very dark story. And um, so it was nice to do something that where there's no violence, there's no death. It's like you know, it's just two people falling in love. They just happen to be star-crossed lovers. You know, they were yeah. in their well, in a death, but it's the death yeah. is off screen. <laughs> yeah, and I did, and and that was in the script that they wanted to. You wanted to see her pick up the gun, and I said, and hold yeah. it to her head. And I, the audience doesn't want to see that. No, yeah, no. Um, and uh, so um, you directed a few Agents of Shields episodes. Are you a comic book it, fan? I am. Uh, what my, and and I'm a comic book. I'm not a reader, but I love the genre, especially mm -hmm. on television. I'm right. I'm not as, as much an MCU fan. But I thought that uh, the stuff that they that Marvel did for TV, whether it was Daredevil or Jessica Jones or The Punisher and Agents of Shield, were as good as it gets on TV. Yeah. And I, I mean, I lobbied hard to get an Agents of Shield. My son and I had seen every episode and every repeat, so we were. And so when I got to direct, they were kind of surprised. As I was a bit of a geek, and <laughs> like I would, I remember I would, I, I was, uh, I was directing a scene and. and um, and I said to the actress, uh, remember in season two when you got blah, 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 and she looked at me like, you've watched every, you've watched every episode? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's not common for the director that just comes in for one episode, yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. Oh, I love yeah, Daredevil. We're, that's, we're that's one of my, yeah, Daredevil's one of my favorites. Is it, Which was, is Mark, 
leaving aside Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which you can't be objective about because you work right. on it, what is your favorite um, superhero TV show? I think it would have to be Daredevil. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. I grew Although up. I really, I, I must say that first season of Jessica Jones with um, that's good. David with David Tennant. Tennant. Yeah. With David Tennant as the villain was really, I mean, I that was riveting television. I yeah. could not, I could not wait for the next episode. Yeah, no, that was really good. He's always good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Daredevil is. Uh, I grew up reading Daredevil, and and this that show was the one that I feel is the most like the comic books. Yes. You know, it's very well, it's accurate. Funny, you, know, if, you know, people say, oh, television, but, I, you know, it's the, the Daredevil series is, no offense, Ben Affleck, way better <laughs> than the Daredevil movie. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that movie, I think it's is a, it's a little unfair. It's not that. Yeah. Bad. <laughs> but um, so um, how so has it been OK for you since the strike started? How has it been for you? Well, I've been blessed that I got to I, I, I worked. uh so we we sh we started shooting uh, in uh, in June. We finished literally June thirtieth, which was supposed to be this, the last day before the strike. Um, and then I've been nonstop in post production until, um, and we deliver next week. So I know I'll feel it. I have three projects that are kind of ready to go that I'm the producer and director on, oh. but I got somebody's got to turn in the script. So. Then I, I will feel I will feel it next week after I take two days of napping to recover from these hours and uh, and then I'll and then I'll know exactly what it feels like. Yeah. I mean, it, it, here's the reality. You know, if even as a TV movie supplier, you're only as good as your next movie, so you're always unemployed. So yeah, sure. It, it, it's not like it's not like agents or or people that are getting laid off or furloughed or and 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 even worse for the poor. I mean. I, the part of this the strike that I don't think gets enough attention is the below the line people that are really hurting in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, all over, you know, in Atlanta and other cities, but but in Los Angeles, I mean, I have many friends that are prop masters or wardrobe mm -hmm. people, drivers, and uh, that that's who's really. I mean, they they're blue collar, go to work guys, and nobody's taught. I mean, there's you know, there's one director, there's you know, maybe a cast of. 25 there's maybe two or three four writers on a project but there's 150 below the line people yeah and uh i don't know why that's not more of a of an issue here about the hardship that they're putting them through and, and you know and from my standpoint as a dga member since we settled a pox on both their houses i mean i think you know the the guilds and the amptp should get in a room close the door and fix it do you know do you do you think it's going to go on a long time or no idea i I'm, think i, I up trying to predict it because I don't yeah. think any thought it was go this long yeah I don't know yeah it's it's well and it's hard on entertainment journalists too I mean I don't yeah. fortunately my husband makes money so I don't have to worry about it but uh <laughs> I know it's hard on journalists trying to get in and I do other things on my site besides interviews but still it's it's tough and and I really appreciate you talking to me I don't mind at all talking to to non-actors <laughs> <laughs> I seem to mostly get actors, but I don't mind talking to producers and directors and writers. I love talking to writers, actually, because they usually know all the ins and outs about how the story was created. Right. So right. And I don't I don't get offered them as much. So you can I don't know how you can blame for that. <laughs> well, I uh, for for when I was early in my career, I would get invited to do those panels at TCA where sure. it would be like oh, oh. The, the, the three stars and then the producer. And so the first three times I did it, nobody asked me a question, of course. Yeah. So finally, they would go, hey, do you want to uh, go do this TCA panel? I go, no, <laughs> I am not going to sit up there again and have everyone ask a question except me. I go, yeah. I, it's like, I want to be, I don't want to be like, uh, you know, desk furniture. Yeah, so, I, no, I understand what you're saying. I, I feel <laughs> sorry sometimes with people when they have, the, if, whether it's TCA or some other kind of panel and they have like a huge cast and nobody at they only asked the big stars questions and nobody asked the other oh i i was on the, I, was at, I was at the t speaking of christmas in connecticut i was at the tca for christmas in connecticut and i was sitting next to chris christopherson and i was in between chris christopherson and diane cannon and every question went to arnold and i could feel them really getting angry <laughs> to the point where I, you could sense that the moderator went let's get a question for diane Yes, yes. I and I I 
when I, the few times I did the TCA virtual panels, I, I tried to, <laughs> I didn't always ask the most famous person. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, well, there's like five famous people. Let's ask this person over here. <laughs> you know? but yeah. You can only do so much. And yeah, that's, I understand completely. Uh, so anything else you can tell us about the movie? Uh, no, we're really, really proud of it. I mean, I, uh, I, I think audiences will, I mean, give us the first five minutes. It is, it, it if it doesn't grab you, I'll be shocked. Um, the response we've been getting has been really incredible. Um, and I think you'll fall, you'll just fall head over heels for Vicky and Casey. It, the, the title bad romance is awesome. <laughs> we, we lobbied for Mr. And Mrs. White, no relation, but <laughs> that's, that's more the indie feature title. It's a little <laughs> long for, yeah. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you talking to me today and uh, hope it's my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.